these notes are uh, about parabolas. So just a general introduction to uh, what we know about parabolas at this point in the module. Um, so parabolas are the graph of a quadratic function. Um, in layman's terms, we talk about this as a U shape or an upside down U shape. Um, so features of parabolas. Parabolas come in the what we call the mother function or parent function. y equals x squared. So when I have a parabola that is not in the parent function shape, it means that there's been some sort of transformation to that function. Um, the, fun the parabolas can be transformed by um, a shift or a translation, a stretch, meaning a uh, dilation, and a reflection. Um, and these are the major um, changes that, have, that the parent function can go through when dealing with parabolas. So a vertical shift is a shift that moves the curve or moves the parent function. Up or down. That's the vertical direction. Um, it doesn't change the general shape of the function, but it does change where on the coordinate plane the graph sits, um, higher or lower than our parent function. A horizontal shift moves the parent function left or right. Again, doesn't change the overall shape, simply changes where the U shape sits on the coordinate plane. A vertical stretch. A vertical stretch happens when I have a dilation of the parent function. A vertical stretch does actually change sort of the shape of the function of the parabola by either making it look more narrow or um, more or wider, um, and it, you know it doesn't change the fact that the, the parabola is still a U shape. It simply changes how wide or narrow the U is. The last major translation, sorry, transformation that occurs for a parabola from the parent function is a reflection. And a reflection occurs when the parent function is reflected or flipped over a line. Um, and in our case, that reflection um, always occurs a, over a line that is horizontal. Um, parabolas also have various important features. So there's the, the mother, the parent function or mother function. Um, and then there are these transformations that move that, that parabola um, left, right, up, down, make it wider, make it narrower. Um, but regardless of where the parabola is sitting or how wide or, or narrow it is, it has some key features. One of these features is the vertex. The vertex is the lowest or highest point on the parabola. Because parabolas are U-shaped, it means they always have a top or a bottom. And so the vertex is the name we give to that top or bottom. And if we look back at the previous page, um, our, this shape parabola has a bottom, 
and this shape parabola has a top. All parabolas being U-shaped have a line of symmetry. The line of symmetry is the line that reflects the parabola back onto itself. Um, so, if again, if I look back at this original picture on the front, my line of reflection is, you know, in this case, they give us it on the, they give us the, the parabola is symmetric along the y-axis, but it doesn't have to be. So this line right here is where the lines of reflection are for these two different parabolas. So if I folded my paper in half along this highlighted line, this parabola would end up on itself. So that's what the line of reflection does. Maximum and minimum go back to the vertex um, with one small caveat, which is that the maximum value is the highest value on the parabola. And I want you to note that the Value and highest means that this is the y coordinate of the vertex. Similarly, the minimum is also the y coordinate of the vertex, but it occurs when it is the lowest value on the parabola. Again, meaning the y coordinate of the vertex. Now, one of the other um, pieces of information that you have covered at this point um, in the module is what each of the letters in the generic, the standard form of or the, sorry, excuse me, the vertex form of parabolas represent. Um, each of these letters actually represent the information we talked about in the first page of our notes, which are the transformations. So each of these letters represent um, either a vertical horizontal shift, um, a dilation, a stretching, or a reflection. So the H represents The parabola has moved h units left or right, meaning the horizontal shift. It also means that it is the x coordinate. of the vertex. So it plays several different roles. The k tells us how much the function was moved, k units, up or down. So this is our vertical shift, which means it is the y-coordinate of the vertex, which means I now can say that the vertex, oops, I actually don't want to fill in that particular space because there's a lot of information that the A gives us. So let's actually write that the fact that the vertex is the point H comma K. So now the A. The A actually plays the role both of the um, Vertical, vertical stretch or dilation, and whether or not the parabola has been reflected. So the A has, so I need to kind of go through a whole bunch of possibilities for the A. So when the A, so this is our vertical stretch and reflection, and now I need to talk about the various values A can be. 
A could be negative. Whenever A equals a negative number, that means that my parabola has been reflected. Meaning it now is no longer a right side up U, it is an upside down U. I then have some options about whether or not A is a number that is bigger than one, smaller than one, bigger than negative one, smaller than negative one. So for lack of a better word, we often talk about A either being between the values of negative one and one, which many students sort of think about as the fractions. Obviously, any number can be written as a fraction, and so these are the numbers that are fractions that are don't have a, um, a whole piece to them, a whole number piece. When negative one, when a is between negative one and one, this makes our function wider in appearance. So our U shape, in, instead of looking skinny, actually starts to look fatter and fatter. So then the other option is when a is less than negative one, or a is greater than one. And when a is less than negative one or greater than negative one, it actually causes our parabola to look narrower, get skinnier. Um, and those are sort of the general things that the a does for us. Now, let's actually do an example with all of this, because there's a lot of information that I can get from my parabola. Um, so we're going to look at one example here where we are given the graph of a parabola, and we're asked to identify the vertex, whether or not it is a maximum or minimum value, and what is it, the line of symmetry, which can also be call, called the axis of symmetry. Sorry, a little typo there or axis of symmetry, the vertical shift, and the horizontal shift. So the first thing I'm going to look for here is the vertex. Um, it is the piece of the parabola that kind of sticks out the most because it's the bottom or top. And in this case, it occurs right here, and it is a bottom. So I can kind of fill in two pieces of information right away. It's the vertex, which is at 4, 1, and it occurs at the bottom, which makes it a minimum. And the minimum is either the highest or the lowest, which means I'm looking at a y value. So the minimum value is 1. The line of symmetry occurs through the vertex, and it's always going to be a vertical line. So that line of symmetry occurs right here. This is where if I folded my paper over that line, my parabola would end up back on itself. And so that line of symmetry is x equals 4. Now my vertical and horizontal shifts, those are the is how far from the, the mother function, the parent function, this graph was moved. Now the mother function, y equals x squared, always goes through 0, 0. So the vertex was at 0, 0, and now it's over here at 4, 1, which means vertical, it is moved up 1, and horizontal, it is moved right 4 units.